Hi, I'm Sue. I'm glad you're joining me for today's Bible reading. And we are continuing in the mysterious, complex, and very fascinating book of Ezekiel in chapters 34 through 36. And when we start out, this is the Lord prophesying against the shepherds of Israel, against the unfaithful shepherds. And throughout here, he's speaking about his sheep, about the shepherds of the sheep, um, about the flock, God's flock. And... Um, and even reference to himself as who, who's the good shepherd of the sheep and um, what he's going to do for his flock. And then when we get over to chapter 35, he's talking about Mount Seir in the area region of Edom. And then at the end, in the last chapter, it's a prophecy to Israel with a promise of, of hope and restoration. So we'll see that as we read through. Verse 1, Yahweh's word came to me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and tell them, even the shepherds, the Lord Yahweh says, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Shouldn't the shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with wool, you kill the fatlings, but you don't feed the sheep. You haven't strengthened the diseased, you haven't healed that which was sick, you haven't bound up that which was broken. You haven't brought back that which was driven away. You haven't sought that which was lost, but you have ruled over them with force and with rigor. There were scattered. They were scattered because there were, was no shepherd. <clears throat> Excuse me. They became food to all the animals of the field and were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and on every hill. Yes, my sheep were scattered on all the surface of the earth. There was no one who searched or sought. Therefore, you shepherds, therefore, you shepherds, hear Yahweh's word. As I live, says the Lord Yahweh, surely because my sheep became a prey and my sheep became food to all the animals of the field, because there was no shepherd and my shepherds didn't search for my sheep, but the shepherds fed themselves and didn't feed my sheep. Therefore, you shepherds, hear Yahweh's word. The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against the shepherds. I will require my sheep at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the sheep. The shepherds won't feed themselves anymore. I will deliver my sheep from their mouth that they may not be food for them. For the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I myself, even I, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered abroad, so I will seek out my sheep. I will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and their fold will be on the mountains of the height of Israel. There they will lie down in a good fold. They will feed on fat pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will cause them to lie down, says the Lord Yahweh. I will seek that which was lost and will bring back that which was driven away. Page turn. And will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them in justice. Not in justice, but in justice. <laughs> Verse 17. As you, O my flock, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, as for you, O my flock, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, the rams and the male goats. Does it seem a small thing to you to have fed on the good pasture? But you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastor, pasture. This isn't flowing to me in my mind. I'm not following. Let me just back up. Let me just back up two verses and read it again. Verse 17. As for you, O my flock, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, the rams and the male goats. Does it seem a small thing to you to have fed on the good pasture? But you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pasture? And to have drunk of the clear waters, but must you foul the residue with your feet? As for my sheep, as for my sheep, they eat that which you have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which you have fouled with your feet. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says to them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you thrust with side and with shoulder, and push all the disease with your horns, until you have scattered them abroad. Therefore, I will save my flock, and they will no more be a prey. I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up one shepherd over them, and he will feed them, even my servant David. He will feed them, and he will be their shepherd. 
I, Yahweh, will be their God, and my servant David, prince among them, I, Yahweh, have spoken it. I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause evil animals to cease out of the land. Now this covenant of peace, I heard somebody, um, a message on this years ago, and that phrase always stuck with me, but just today I found a quote I want to share with you. This is from the enduringword.com. He said, a covenant of peace. The description offers one of the fullest explanation, no, explications of the Hebrew notion of shalom. The term obviously signifies much more than the absence of hostility or tension. It speaks of wholeness, harmony, fulfillment, humans at peace with their environment and with God. I'm going to read that again. A covenant of peace. The description offers one of the fullest explications of the Hebrew notion of shalom, which means peace. The term obviously signifies much more than the absence of hostility or tension. <clears throat> Excuse me. It speaks of wholeness, harmony, fulfillment, humans at peace with their environment and with God. That's what a lot of the environmentalists want, right? They want us to live in peace and harmony, kind of back to basics with with the environment, which which was the original intent, right? And we'll be restored to that later on, but not during this fallen era. So, um, you may have heard the definition of shalom as nothing missing, nothing broken. I think this kind of goes along with that. So it's a, it's a, among other things, a picture of the future, um, the future eternal reign of the good shepherd. So back to the, back to the text here, verse 25, I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause evil animals to cease out of the land. They will dwell securely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. I will make them and the places around my hill a blessing. I will cause the shower to come down in its season. There will be showers of blessing. The tree of the field will yield its fruit and the earth will yield its increase and they will be secure in the land. Then they will know that I am Yahweh when I've broken the bars of their yoke and have delivered them out of the hand of those who made slaves of them. They will no more be a prey to the nations. Neither will the animals of the earth devour them, but they will dwell securely <clears throat> excuse me, and no one will make them afraid. I will raise up to them a plantation for renown, and they will no more be consumed with famine in the land and not bear the shame of the nations any more. They will know that I, Yahweh, their God, am with them, and that they, the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord Yahweh. You, my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, says the Lord Yahweh. Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Mount Seir. Now, Mount Seir, this is in the region of Edom. And if you're driving, don't stop. But you can see on the little map on the screen that um, Mount Seir is south. Let's see, I've got, a little, I've got a little quote I pulled off on this too. Now, this is not a Bible study, but I, I like to at least get kind of an idea of what we're reading and a visual. I like to get the geographical a picture of where we're talking about. And so this is just from Wikipedia. It says Mount Seir is the ancient and biblical name for a mountainous region stretching between the Dead Sea and the Gulf of, of Aqaba in the northwestern region of Edom and southeastern of Judah. So you can see on the map there, it's southeast of Judah and Jerusalem. I think the map only has Jerusalem. I'm not looking at it right now. Um, the map has Jerusalem just to the northwest of the Dead Sea there. And so down south, um, southeast is the region of Mount Seir and Edom. This is the region we're about to read about. This quote says, it also may have marked the older historical limit of ancient Egypt and Canaan. So looking at that map, again, just to, <clears throat> and if you can stop and look at it, otherwise just to picture it in your mind. But you see there, you have a little, like the little circle, which is um, the Sea of Galilee, and then the straight line coming down to the Dead Sea, which is the Jordan River. And so the way I understand the Gospels, Jesus was up, had uh, his ministry up all around the Sea of Galilee. And then the Gospels go through, um, that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are his journey to Jerusalem. And then you have more events that happened in, in and around Jerusalem before he was crucified. So that's that region. And then you can see um, south of that where Edom and Mount Seir are. So this is chapter 35. Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it and tell it. The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, Mount Seir, and I will stretch out my hand against you. I will make you a desolation and an astonishment. I will lay your cities waste and you will be desolate. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. 
because you have had a perpetual hostility and have given over the children of Israel to the power of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time of the iniquity of the end. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord Yahweh, I will prepare you for blood, and blood will pursue you. Since you have not hated blood, therefore blood will pursue you. Thus I will make Mount Seir an astonishment and a desolation. I will cut off from it him who passes through and him who returns. I will fill its mountains with its slain. The slain with the sword will fall in your hills and in your valleys and in all your water courses. I will make you a perpetual desolation and your cities will not be inhabited. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. Because you have said these two nations and these two countries will be mine and we will possess it, whereas Yahweh was there. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord Yahweh, I will do according to your anger and according to your envy, which you have shown out of your hatred against them. I will make myself known among you when I judge you. You will know that I, Yahweh, have heard all your insults, which you have spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, They have been laid desolate. They have been given us to devour. You have magnified yourselves against me with your mouth and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard it. That should wake some people up. Boy, <clears throat> you see, again, just continually reiterating this point. Here God is making, in, the, in this judgment, he's making against Edom and Mount Seir. He's giving the list of indictments against them, the list of charges against them, as well as letting them know what the, the punishment is, right? The, the, um, the verdict of this court of law. And that he hears them. He hears them challenging him. He hears them accusing him or dismissing him. And they're going to now answer for that. Um, so it says, You've magnified yourself against me with your mouth and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard it. Verse 14, The Lord Yahweh says, When the whole earth rejoices, I will make you desolate. As you rejoiced over the inheritance of my house of Israel because it was desolate, so I will do to you. You will be desolate, Mount Seir, and all Edom, even all of it. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Chapter 36. Now this is, this is, a uh, chapter 36 is about Israel, God's people, God's land. You, son of man, prophesy to the mountains of Israel and say, you mountains of Israel, hear Yahweh's word. The Lord Yahweh says, because the enemy has said against you, aha, and the ancient high places are ours in our possession. Therefore prophesy and say, the Lord Yahweh says, because even because, even because, that's a funny way to write it. Let me back up. The Lord Yahweh says, because, um, the Lord Yahweh says, because even because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that you might be a possession to the residue of the nations, and you are taken up in the lips of talkers and the evil report of the people. Therefore, you mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh says to the mountains and to the hills, to the watercourses and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes and to the cities that are forsaken, which have become a prey and derision to the residue of the nations that are all around. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Surely in the fire of my jealousy, I have spoken against the residue of the nations and against all Edom that have appointed my land to themselves for possession with the joy of all their heart with despite of soul, to cast it out for prey. Therefore prophesy concerning the land of Israel, and tell the mountains, the hills, the watercourses, and the valleys. The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my wrath, because you have borne the shame of the nations. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says, I have sworn, surely the nations that are around you will bear their shame. Verse 8, But you mountains of Israel, you shall shoot out your branches and yield your fruit to my people Israel for they are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you and will come to you and you will be tilled and sown. I will multiply men on you, all the house of Israel, even all of it. The cities will be inhabited and the waste places will be built. I will multiply man and animal on you. They will increase and be fruitful. I will cause you to be inhabited as you were before and you will do better than at your beginnings. Then I pray that for every person who ever listens to this, that our end will be better than our beginning, and that we will continually produce, and no matter what the situation, no matter what trial, that our end will be better than our beginning in Jesus' name. Still in verse 11, then you will know that I am Yahweh. Yes, I will cause men to walk on you, even my people Israel. They will possess you, and you will be their inheritance, and you will never again bereave them of their children. 
The Lord Yahweh says, because they say to you, you are a devourer of men and have been a bereaver of your nation. Therefore, you shall devour men no more and not bereave your nation anymore, says the Lord Yahweh. I won't let you hear the shame. I won't let you hear the shame of the nations anymore. You won't bear the reproach of the people anymore, and you won't cause your nation to stumble anymore, says the Lord Yahweh. Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their own land, they defiled it by their ways and by their deeds. Their way before me was as the uncleanness of a woman in her impurity. Therefore I poured out my wrath on them for the blood which they had poured out on the land, and because they had defiled it with their idols. I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries. I judged them according to their way and according to their deeds. When they came to the nations where they went, they profaned my holy name, in that men said of them, These are Yahweh's people, and have left the land. But I had respect for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations where they went. Wow. Therefore tell the house of Israel, the Lord Yahweh says, I don't do this for your sake, house of Israel, but for my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you went. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned among them. Then the nations will know that I am Yahweh, says the Lord Yahweh, when I am proven holy in you before their eyes. I will take you from among the nations and gather you out of all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from your idols. I will also give you a new heart and will put a new spirit within you. I will take away the stony heart of flesh and give you a heart. I will, I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. You will keep my ordinances and do them. You will dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You will be my people and I will be your God. I will save you from all your uncleanness. I will call for the grain and will multiply it and lay no famine on you. I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field, that you may receive no more the reproach of famine among the nations. Then you will remember your evil weeds, evil ways and your deeds that were not good, and you will loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. I don't do this for your sake, says the Lord Yahweh. Let it be known to you. Be ashamed and confounded for your ways, house of Israel. The Lord Yahweh says, In that day I will cleanse you from all iniquities. I will cause the cities to be inhabited and the waste places will be built. The land that was desolate will be tilled instead of being a desolation in the sight of all who pass by. They will say this land was desolate and has become like a garden of Eden. The waste, desolate, and ruined cities are fortified and inhabited. Then the nations that are left around you will know that I, Yahweh, have built the ruined places and planted that which was desolate. I, Yahweh, have spoken it and will do it. I mean, just look at Israel today, ever since Israel became a nation again and the, the prosperity of the land, the fruitfulness the the um from what i understand it's quite prolific in um you know like the farms and gardening and vineyards and stuff so at least that's the impression i get i haven't been there so verse 37 and 38 last two verses the lord yahweh says for this moreover i will be inquired of by the house of israel to do it for them i will increase them with men like a flock as the flock for sacrifice as the flock of jerusalem in her appointed feasts so the waste cities will be filled with flocks of men. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. That's the end of today's reading. Again, I don't want this so much to be a Bible study. It's just a Bible reading and a time to just kind of absorb the word at face value and, and see what the Holy Spirit would show us through it uh, personally, each person. And just, um, you know, just get the puzzle pieces to continue to put our jigsaw puzzle together to understand um, the books of the Bible. And I invite your comments. Please comment any thoughts that you have, any corrections, you know, any additional information you want to add. Feel free to email me. The email is in the description under the YouTube channel. And listen, if you haven't given your heart to Jesus, if you, in other words, if you haven't made him Lord of your life and received the gift of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ, please don't wait. I read a quote by Steve Stewart calling, um, it's about the inclusive Jesus. He said, I don't think there was ever anyone who lived as inclusive a life as Jesus. And he just gave that picture of Jesus going around um, everywhere he went, really, and just loving people. And from from all strata, except the ones that were hard hearted and, you know, and just full of religious puffery. But um, 
just loving people. And Steve, Steve said that inclusion is the activation of compassion. And that was it. That was the compassion and love of Jesus. And he's still that way today. He wants every person in his fold that he can, you know, be that shepherd and, and take care of us. And, and really, that's what it's referring to here in this last part that we read where he said, I'll take out the stony heart and give you a heart of flesh. That's what he wants to do. He wants to, he, he, I believe that's what he referred to when he said, you can't put new wine in old wine skins. You have to have that new wine skin, that new spirit first, so he can put the new wine of the Holy Spirit in you, fill you with his spirit and write his word on your heart. That's why it said, um, let me find it real quick. He said, um, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes because now once we're born again, once we receive that gift of the Holy Spirit, now we walk in obedience to God out of our heart, not from outward works and not from a list of do's and don'ts, but just out of a, a heart of love and compassion. We follow God and, and uh, walk as his disciples, as his sheep, right? And also in the description under the YouTube channel, as uh, information how you can get your free Bible, if you want one of them, and just other helpful information, there's a link to a playlist under there. There's a link to the um, introduction to Ezekiel that I did. And I also encourage you to go look up like the, uh, there's a YouTube by Bible Project, which I think is called Ezekiel Overview, which will give you a real good idea of the book. It's, it's fun and easy to watch. It's a graphic art. They draw out the book as they're explaining it to you. So go get that. And again, thanks for joining me. God bless you. Till next time.